What's up guys, Inigami here, and you know who's coming to Global, that's right, Buster Call Raid. So let's go through some teams that you can use for the Buster Call Raid. Now, the Buster Call Raid, if you don't know, is multiple raid bosses in a row. Starting on stage 3, you're going to get raid bosses. I'm going to show you guys, remember, once again, that Game With is an excellent website with lots of resources. It is all in Japanese, so use Google Translate to translate the website so you can actually read things. Uh, some things won't quite make sense, like Xan Conjugated Attack Force. That means Slasher Attack is cut by six, uh, or by two-thirds. So you only get one-third attack for Slashers on Shu. So, you know, things aren't translated completely properly. I will go through, and we'll, well first, we'll, let's go through and talk about each boss, right? On stage three, you're going to get Shu. Shu has 360,000 health, attacks for 2,800 damage every single turn. He will reduce your, all your slashers attack by two thirds, so slashers get one third their attacks for five turns, and after that it's just a regular fight. Once you get him below 20%, he will resummon any of the units around him that you have killed. Next after that is very good, very good. Each of these units around him has five hit points. You really want to take them down because they will lock whatever type they're weak against. And he himself will attack every four turns for 10,000 damage. Kill him before he attacks you or you negate that damage because you don't want to take 10,000 damage. And all these guys around him you really want to kill very, very quickly though because they, their lock is very bad. That's five hit points each. Locking is bad. And below 20%, once again, he resummons characters. A lot of these characters will resummon the friends around them. Next stage after that is Strawberry. Uh, Strawberry. Oh, and I, I want to remind you that these locks are a five-turn lock. So it's it's not like a two-turn lock that you want to lock and get stolen. That's a five-turn lock. It's pretty painful to have to deal with. If you're looking for what sockets to bring on this island, the best sockets to bring are to level two anti-lock. Uh, auto heal and cooldown reduction, of course, are very nice to have. So is level one or matching. But level two anti-lock is the big is the big big one that will make a difference on this island. And Strawberry is going to be our next boss. 500,000, almost 500,000 health. Attacks for 6,700 damage every 2-3 to three turns. I'm pretty sure he can start with a 2-turn cooldown. Uh, he will, every 2 turns, lock somebody for 2 turns. This is, where the, this is one of the times that level 2 anti-lock is very useful. It's one random person. Kill all the people around him and then kill him. Not very difficult. And then after that is Onigumo. Onigumo has almost 6,000 or 600,000 health. He attacks pretty weak, but he attacks every single turn. Below 20% attacks for 8,000 damage. And once again, locks for two turns. You get to see uh, two turn lock, two turn lock every two turns. He also limits your chain to two times. So if you're using a Rayleigh team against Onigumo, you're going to have a bad time. Not to say that you can't beat Onigumo using a Rayleigh team. You could just stall it out. That's actually what I did the very first time I did this island. I just used Rayleigh team and I just stalled until the lock uh, the chain coefficient lock goes away. But basically, if you're using a Rayleigh team, you can't do any damage to Onigumo while that debuff is up at all. Dalmatian has 360,000 health. He attacks for just about 10,000 damage. He has debuff protection. That's basically his big gimmick. Kill the guys around him and then kill Dalmatian. If you have the Thousand Sunny, this is where you want to use the Thousand Sunny because Thousand Sunny will kill everyone around Dalmatian in a single special. Very, very useful on this stage if you have the Thousand Sunny. It just makes it a little easier. Not necessary, just easier. And then the final stage is Momonga. Momonga has 800,000 health. He will half your damage for first three turns. On turn two, he will summon two extra... Oh, he will resummon anybody that's dead. So if you take the first turn to kill the three units on the backside, turn two, he'll resummon five units. If you kill one of them, he'll resummon three units. So what you want to do on Momonga usually is use uh, just attack him on turn one, use Gompan Usopp on turn two, and then kill everyone else after that. Another stage where you can use a Thousand Sunny if this is the better stage for you. But just make sure that if you can't kill Momonga in one turn, that you expect him to summon characters all around him. And then he will... Uh, so here's where he summons the three dudes on his uh, turn one, and then he resummons anybody who's dead after after they die. So... Three tax for tax for that. Below twenty percent damage uh, negates damage for one turn. So t actual teams, right now. Now we have an idea of what the raid bosses do. The cause the not coliseum. 
Buster Call Raid isn't a very difficult fight, but it is a marathon. You've got lots of raid bosses back to back. Each of them is about as difficult as a fairly difficult 30 stamina Fortnite Island boss. So not the hardest fights out there, but you do have to fight them back to back to back. So the first team we're going to be looking at is a Mihawk Slasher team. Yes, Shu, the very first raid boss boss, is going to reduce your slasher attack, but it is only for five turns. So if you stall until Gullipound Usopp is ready on the first two turns, use Gullipound Usopp on turn three, either after the first turn or immediately. And then by that time, you'll just take a, a hit from Shu. It's only a couple thousand damage. And then you can kill him easily after that. And then after that, the Mihawk Slash team will get through the rest of the island pretty easily. You can use anyone here instead of Rob Lucci. You can use um, Arlong, Rob Lucci, any slasher you'd like, really. Uh, Croc here is also quite easily replaceable. Any slasher works well here. Doflamingo is very nice for a slasher team. Highly recommended if you don't have them. Once again, you can use many different slashers. This island is all about your team and how well it works together. And there are many, many different possibilities because basically the entire island is just make sure that you use things appropriately. The best time to use Gompan Usopp on this team is going to be on Shu. And then most likely again on the uh, Onigumo, which you might have problems with if you don't have a strong strength character. And then, once again, of course, on Momoga. And after that, we're going to be looking at a Gear 3 team. Gear 3 is definitely one of the easiest teams to beat uh, Buster Call Raid with. Because Gear 3 has a lot of damage and tons of versatility. You can use literally anybody on a Gear 3 team. You could, sort, you could use characters like Perona and Kaku. You can use characters that are just your highest beat sticks and just kill everything very easily. Gear 3 is very easy. There's nothing on this island that makes Gear 3 hard to use. He basically ignores the anti-chain coefficient from Onigumo. He basically just destroys everything in a turn or two. So Gear 3, very, very easy. You can use Sadie Gear 3. Now Sadie, we're not really taking advantage of her reduced defense ability. But, and she does have quite a bit reduced damage from a double gear 3 team, but it's not to say that it doesn't work. It's, you're just going to need higher level characters if you're using a Sadie gear 3 team. But gear, double gear 3 or Sadie gear 3, excellent teams. Highly recommend them. One of the easiest teams you can get away with. And then after that, oh, as long as you hit your perfects, of course. Can't, can't really use it if you don't hit your perfects. Uh, gear 3 with anybody, once again, is the same team. Anybody works as a sub on that team. Mihawks, Aokijis, Nels, whatever you like to use. Uh, the next other easiest team that you have is Sengoku. Once again, the name of the game is Versatility. You notice a lot of rainbow teams, teams that have lots of different colors on there. Salway so against the blue, very good. You use a Dex character, or against the green Onigumo, you use a Strength character like Arlong. You know, you're gonna mix and match the subs on this team until you find a good team that works out for you. Uh, once again, Sengoku doesn't really have any difficulties with any of the stages in particular. If you want to, you can avoid slashers so that we ignore Shu's difficult part. Just, just bring anybody you want on a Sengoku team. Once again, Alvidas. Peronas, if you want to bring some damage reducers, Kobe's and Kaku's, you want to bring Orb Booster. Robin, very nice against uh, against Momonga because he is an int character. A side character, because she is an int character against his side character. Then you have the ever, ever popular Anel's team. The double Anel team heals you up for so much damage every single turn. Remember, with a single Anel with 100 cotton candy, you heal for about 1500 health every single turn. With double Anels, you'll he'll be healing for a cool 3000 damage every turn, which is often just more damage than a lot of raid bosses. A lot of the bosses can just put out. You can basically stall on Onigumo forever since he only attacks you for about 3000 damage. You can stall on Shu forever if you wanted to. Uh, the Really, the only part that you might have problem with is the Onigumo because he is a full dex team. But once again, he only attacks for 3,000 damage. And now will basically heal for 3,000 damage. So it's a very easy team, very consistent team. Not the fastest team because you might get a little slow on parts. But very, very good. Very, very easy. Uh, the subs on this team don't really matter. It's just that if you have Rob Lucci and Hina and Kaku, that's at least three orbs of matching. Locked for two turns with orb boosted for two turns. 
pretty nice. Pretty nice. Once again, Golden Pond Usopp, any stage you might have difficulty with, and where you use that Golden Pond Usopp is really going to depend on where you personally have difficulty with your team. So that's how it's going to work with every single one of these teams. Every team I suggest you is going to be bringing Golden Pond Usopp because you can stall everyone except for uh, except for Dalmatian, which is why I also recommend using the Thousand Study on Dalmatian stage. So that way you don't have to worry about him. You can just spend three turns killing Dalmatian himself. Because his 600,000 health, oh, I'm sorry, it's only 300,000 health. His 300,000 health, it might take a couple turns to get through if you have a lower DPS team. And then we have the Zeph and Jinbei team, a nice fighter team. Once again, more rainbow teams. The subs that you use are all going to depend on what characters you have. I'm repeating myself a lot because this is how this island works. How Buster Call Raid works, it's not too difficult. It's all about a marathon team. Now I am excluding Monster Chopper on this team because he will be taking some damage and you probably want to heal up that damage. And so we're going to exclude Monster Chopper so that we can actually heal whenever we get food. Foxy will also let you stall if you want a second stall who, and who's also a fighter and who's also an int character who does extra damage against Momonga and Strawberry. So Foxy actually very useful on the, on the fighter team. And then the last team we're going to be looking at right now is the... Oh, did I go too far? There we go. The... Oh, did I, I think I completely skipped over the Alkaji team. The Alkaji Striker team. You can use Alkaji and Kid or Alkaji and Virgo. Virgo is a little better because we are fighting a lot of int characters on this island. And Nell is great if you need help with Dalmatian or just use his damage on Momonga at the very end. Alvita for... Uh, reduce damage, lock with lock your orbs with Alkaji, use Kaku for two turns of orb boosting, have a very easy time with the Alkaji team. And then now the last team we're gonna be looking at is Ace. You know, if you if you want to have a good team, put a Stronghold Frankie here, replace Usopp with Stronghold Usopp, and replace Nero with Zephyr, and you've got yourself a great team. Anyways, Ace team certainly works. It's not as good without those characters that we have on Japan that we don't have on Global. Blackbeard is really just here because he's a strength shooter. There are people who boost defense on this island. You can use Nero on those. Heracleson to make sure you've got basically almost all matching orbs except for two. Ace, lots of health. Very consistent team. Works out pretty well. Guys, those are just my suggestions for teams. If you have suggestions for teams, you can tell other people in the comments down below. My old walkthrough video is a little outdated. It's a little bit of misinformation on there because we made that whenever the island first came out. A lot of bosses, a lot of, a lot of small mistakes here and there. Uh, I will be making a new guide over some new global teams that you can use once the raid comes out in a couple days. Hope you're prepared. Good luck, and y'all stay beautiful.